What is going on world? If you saw my last video or you were led to this YouTube channel, my other YouTube channel, The Hungarian Experiment Talks, thank you so much for following over here from that other video. Make sure you subscribe and follow down below. Uh, I'd really appreciate it because I'm going to start uploading to this channel a lot more. But uh, if you saw there, I was uh, looking at this research on uh, the uh, this housewife that they gave LSD to in the 1950s, and they ended the video with this gentleman named Gerald Hurd. And I found this fascinating. I'm really bad lately at just documenting and making sure I write down stuff. So I thought I'd just make a video about this, even just to remind myself in the long run. But Gerald Hurd is this very interesting dude. I want to dive more into research around him. And he's written a bunch of interesting books here. So on his Wikipedia, I just dove into it really quick. Uh, he's a British-born American histor historian, science writer, pub uh, public lecturer, educator, and philosopher. He wrote many articles in over 35 books. I feel like I would vibe and fuck with this dude. Like, he seems like a very interesting guy. Um, I'm not going to dive too much into his background. You can go check it out there. Heard was born in London. London, England. But uh, kind of interesting. Both uh, both Londoners. <laughs> and uh, just in general here, uh, we'll just skip right down to LSD. So in 1954, Heard tried mescaline. And in the mid-1950s tried LSD, he felt that used properly, these had a strong potential to enlarge man's mind by allowing a person to see beyond his ego. In August 1956, Alcoholics Anonymous founder Bill Wilson first took LSD under Hurd's guidance and with the officiating presence of Sidney Cohen, a psychiatrist then with the California Veterans Administration Hospital. According to Wilson, the session allowed him to to re-experience a spontaneous spiritual experience he had years before, which had enabled him to overcome his own alcoholism. Wow. In the late 1950s, Hurd also worked with psychiatrist Cohen to introduce others to LSD, including John Huston and Steve Allen. With experience, Hurd arrived at a judicious view of the value of psychedelics, since at their best the insights and ecstasies they facilitate are temporary states. Religion writer Don Latin wrote that Hurd's view was LSD might provide an experience of the great mysteries, but it offered no instant answers. I, I definitely agree with that. Uh, I, again, I've only experimented with LSD once, but my experimentation with mushrooms so far, wow. Um, but let's keep going here. Hurd was also responsible for introducing the then unknown Huston Smith to Aldous Huxley. Smith became one of the preeminent religious studies scholars in the United States. His book, The World's Religions, is a classic in the field, has sold over 2 million copies, and, and is considered a particularly useful introduction to comparative religion. The meeting with Huxley led eventually to Smith's connection to Timothy Leary. Like, this guy was a big connection with all these crazy psychedelic dudes. This is fascinating. But I'm just going to skip down here. Um, I haven't really looked into this Five Ages of Man. I want to look into it, but it, his bibliography here sounds fascinating. It's like he wrote some interesting shit. Like I looked really quick here into Narcissus, the anatomy of clothes, and it just seems very interesting here. So let's just take a quick look, but I definitely like want to check out a bunch of his books over time. Right now, I'm just so busy. I wish I could uh, analyze and read a lot of books right now, but there's just so much going on. I'm trying to create for my own channel as well as you know Matt's channel and we're just doing so much here but I'm documenting this for myself so I make sure I like uh, eventually in the future when I have time go through his full bibliography and just analyze this dude's stuff because a lot of these books like just wait till we get it here but this is Narcissus an anatomy of clothes three mottos face the table of contents of this book two from Sartor Resteris and one from Michelangelo. The analogies they draw between life and clothes, the body and architecture and its products are worked out in detail. The author takes the line that psychology, having resolved to treat nothing in its province as insignificant, clothing, now regarded as unimportant, may be assumed to be of racial significance as a phase of the evolution which started on new lines when man emerged. Mr. Hurd regards both clothes and architecture as parallel manifestations of an evolutionary force, tracing them from the beginning of weaving and the use of woven wattle for walls in the Neolithic age through Egypt, Mesopotamia, Crete, the classical period and historical times, down to the feral concrete building of the 
today and modern costume where development apparently has ceased. Fanciful though the analogy may seem, it is perhaps not extravagant to assume that racial character manifesting itself in two media so entirely different may still exhibit a certain convergence in style so as far conditions allow. After a certain stage, however, the standardizing more or less of all modern communities is unlikely to offer much play for racial individuality, however, either clothing or architecture may develop. Now, I don't know if that sounds interesting to you guys, but that sounds kind of fascinating to me. I can't wait to dive into that book. But as we go down the list here of the some of the books he's written, The Ascent of Humanity, The Emergence of Man, Social Substance of Religion, An Essay of the Evolution of Religion, The Source of Civilization, Exploring the Stratosphere, Pain, Sex, and Time, A New Outlook on Evolution and the Future of Man. And he wrote a lot about God here, like the gospel according to Gamiel, the eternal gospel, is God evident, is God in history. And then he's like, you know, took LSD and it's like morals since 1900 is another world watching the riddle of flying saucers, Gabriel and the creatures training for a life of growth, the five ages of man, the psychology of human history. So uh, let's actually jump up here because he wrote that in 1963, 1964. And I'm kind of interested to see. And uh, yeah, so. In 1963, what some would consider to be Hurd's magnum opus, a book titled The Five Ages of Man, was published. According to Hurd, the prevalent developmental stage among humans in today's well-industrialized societies should be regarded as the fourth, the humanic stage of the total individual who is mentally dominated, feeling him or herself to be autonomous, separate from other persons. Hurd writes, this stage is characterized by the basic humanity manic concept of a mankind that is completely self-seeking because it is completely individualized into separate physi physiques yeah physiques that can have direct knowledge of only their own private pain and pleasure inferring but faintly the feelings of others such a race of ingenious animals each able to see and seek his own advantage must be kept in combination with each other by appealing to their separate interests whoa yo i can't wait to read this um damn in modern industrial societies, a person, especially if educated, has the opportunity to begin entering the first maturity of the humanic total individual in his or her mid-teens. However, according to Hurd, based on his decades of study, his intuition, and his many years of reflection, a fifth stage is in the process of emerging, a post-individual psychological phase of persons and therefore of culture. According to Hurd, the second maturity can be one that lies beyond personal success and personal success, economic mastery, and the psychophysical capacity to enjoy life. What is this? Hurd termed this phase leptoid man, or from the Greek word lepsis to leap, or leptoid, leptoid, I don't know, because humans increasingly face the opportunity to take a leap into a considerably expanded consciousness in which the various aspects of the psyche will be integrated without any aspects being repressed or seeming foreign. A society that recognizes this stage of development will honor and support individuals in a second maturity who wish to resolve their inner conflicts and dissolve their inner blockages and become the sages of the modern world. Yo, this is crazy. Further, instead of simply enjoying biological and physiological health as Freud and other important psychiatric or physiological philosophers of the total individual phase conceived, leptoid man will not only have entered a meaningful second maturity recognized by his or her society but can then become a human of developed spirituality similar to the mystics of the past and a person of wisdom whoa that's woke like that's like leptoid man is woke bro <laughs> like true woke not a lot of these like fake people who are claiming woke and i'm not claiming i'm woke or anything but it's just so funny to watch a lot of people run around calling themselves woke like if you call yourself woke
But collectively and culturally, we are still in the transitional phase, not really recognizing an identity beyond the super individualistic fourth, humanic phase. Hurd's views were cautionary about developments in society that were not balanced about inappropriate aims of our use of technological power. He wrote, we are aware of precarious imbalance of our persistent and ever increasing production of power and our inadequacy of purpose, of our critical analytic ability and our creative paucity, of our triumphantly efficient techno technical education and our ineffective, irrelevant education for values, for meaning, for the training of the will, the lifting of the heart, and the illumination of the mind. Bro, this dude was woke as fuck. They were so woke in the 50s, and like, what the fuck happened? Like, honestly, what happened? Like, we were on such a good path, and then, like, this stuff just kind of, like, slipped out of society. Now, I just kind of stumbled on Gerald Hurd here. I'm not even 100% if Michael Pollan actually discusses this in his book, but this is how I kind of came upon this. If you guys are following along my journey here, I'm just diving into a bunch of research that uh, Michael Pollan mentioned in his book, How to Change Your Mind, and I'm just stumbling upon more of these crazy and wild studies that they did in the 1950s and these wildly interesting people like Gerald Hurd. So if you guys are interested in more, follow along the journey because I'm documenting a whole bunch of this, this research I'm going through as well as my own experiences with taking acid LSD and over the last 10 and a half to 11 months I've been ex heavily extensively experimenting around with mushrooms so if you guys are interested follow along that journey and uh, go check me out but for now I'm gonna take off check out Gerald Hurd here definitely I'm gonna go check out some of his uh, books here in the future I personally don't have the time to read through all this but if you guys do go check out some of his books here these look fascinating and at one point in my life you know I'm just gonna spend a month or two and just and just like bang out all the that's because like you know his uh hit what is that five ages of man there that seems fascinating I can't wait to dive into that and he wrote that in the 60s like dang all right, well, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. If you enjoyed this, I love if you go smash that like button. And of course, leave me a comment. I want to know what you think about all this. Uh, LSD, psychedelics, this gentleman named Gerald Hurd, how woke people seem to be in the 50s and 60s, and all the crazy experiments that they were doing back then. This stuff is fascinating to me, and I'd love to know what you guys think. So go leave me a comment in the comment section below. And uh, if you guys are new to this uh, YouTube channel, The Hungarian Experiment Talks, make sure you go hit that subscribe button because uh over time i'm going to try to be adding as much as i can and diving a lot deeper on this youtube channel where i can just sit here and connect with you guys and we can go over a lot more research and uh have some fun along the ride so thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you guys in the next one i am the hungarian experiment